Hey everyone, it's Eric from Garden Fork. Um, I'm running this on my laptop. It's really windy out, so let me know. First of all, could you let me know if you hear me? Uh, could some of you just kind of go, hey Eric, we can hear you. I'm using my iPad because <laughs> I was pulling my cart and I'm 58 years old. So, so anyway, welcome. Um, man, am I out of shape. So can you guys hear me? Could someone say, yeah, Eric, we can hear you? You know, you never know when it's just kind of all held together with, you know, hot glue, which is my world. So, oh, Adam's there and Claire. Okay, good. Cool. Hey, everybody. Hello, Barb. Hi, Megan. Welcome to um, another Troy Built Live. This is sponsored by Troy Built. Uh, if you don't know, well, a lot of people don't know who I am. I'm Eric. I have a YouTube channel called Garden Fork. And um, we're up here in Northwest Connecticut. It's part of New England. And we're talking about uh, prepping your garden, be it a vegetable or flower garden, for spring. Um, so, I mean, we've all been kind of through this rather unusual and unpleasant time. And we're all rare in the go and get outside. And it's actually beautiful. The wind is whipping here. So if you can't hear me. Oh, hey, Claire. Um, if the if the if the sound goes out, just gonna go. Hey, your sound's going out. We also the camera operator is doing quality control. She has the earbuds on. My uh, Labrador pups are here. But you probably want to get out and like get going, right? This is how I get going. I have a series of raised beds. But you also just might have a flower bed like this, or you just don't have. You just want to start. So we're gonna start from the beginning here about how to prep for things. The first thing I actually wanted to talk about was tools, believe it or not. First thing you should consider getting, which is why I was late, um, is this is a string trimmer. It's a, it's a Troy built model that they sent me, but this puppy has a power, it's four cycle, which is really nice. And then it has various attachments on it. And if you're just starting a garden, you're going to want to clear stuff out. And so this has a brush cutter. So if you're starting out with something like this brush behind me, um, there's this kind of nether area between the tree line and the actual grass here. If you were going to start a garden from scratch, you would want to beat this back with your brush cutter. Brush cutter, sorry. I've only had two cups of tea here. But like there's bayberry back there, there's a bunch of brush that you want to knock down then go through with your rototiller and then start. The other thing to consider is, do you want to garden in the ground or do you want to garden in a raised bed? And I am, if you know anything of my world, I am very partial to raised beds. If you have a ruptured disc at L5S1, like someone does and has already had one hole drilled in his vertebrae, um, you want to avoid that again. So it wasn't too bad actually. I woke up and I didn't have any more pain, but, um, these are raised beds. They make your world really much easier because what you can do, well, there's a whole list of stuff of why it's better, but what I really like is you can sit on the bed like that and reach in and garden. Couple, you know, I actually wrote all this down. I have a list. Can you believe, Barb, I have a list. So benefits of raised beds, they warm up faster in the spring, better drainage, much easier to maintain the soil. What's that? Um, here they are. They're easier to weed, easier to walk, less soil compaction, which we're going to talk about. And it's kind of like if you are an adherent or interested in square foot gardening, how do you hold the list and hold the laptop? I tried to do a webcam and the microphone didn't work. So. And I'm in the middle of nowhere in New England. So, but anyway, square foot gardening, which allows you to have more bang for your buck in the soil that you have, you can use a raised bed and it's much better. And how do you keep your Labradors out of your raised beds? <laughs> they just make me smile. Um, I'm still working on this, but what I have done is at least where the garlic is planted, I put some of this um, ribbon tape here. 
and they seem to understand that, but for my open beds, they haven't done that yet. But anyway, let's go back to prep. I wanted to talk about just a couple more tools you might want. Think about, I own a tractor, and yeah, I love it, but you know what I use more? Is this plywood garden cart, which is, when I bought the house 20 years ago, this cart was in the shed. I put new tires and new tubes on it. Look how old those spokes are. And I replaced one piece of plywood, and it's still going. You can move dirt, plants, Labradors if they want to ride, I guess. Um, I think the brand is called Gardenway, but think about investing in a quality trailer just to move stuff around. I, I really enjoy that. The other things you want are uh, mild panic. I can't find my tools. Oh, hold on. Our quality hand tools. Uh, you know, I have some big power tools, but I think a lot of what I get done is, again, sitting on the side of the bed. Here's some lettuce that we'll talk about. Oh, Troy Built makes hand tools. They uh, own a company in Germany that makes really quality hand tools. So most of my gardening is done with these two things. I open up soil with my little fork, like this, transplant and dig out stuff with that. That's pretty simple. We're gonna talk about pruning, and um, this is a wicked good pruner, and um, pruning shear. This is called a anvil pruner. But anyway, think about, instead of going to the dollar store and buying something cheap, that's just gonna break. If you leave it out in the yard, if you leave this out in the yard, which someone has done, it doesn't fall apart and rust. If you leave a dollar store tool in the yard, it's just gonna fall apart. So think about quality and go from there. Does anyone have any questions? I have not found a way to keep my labs out of the garden. Um, I'm working on it, Claire. The other thing is a tub. I don't know the name of these but they're rubber and they have rubber handles on them. They're a little pricey, but they're nice and wide and you can haul all sorts of stuff. We're hauling wood chips, which we're gonna talk about. Um, I just loaded this thing up from, the, I have a pile over there, that's a long story. But anyway, quality tools, that moves into thinking about your garden siting. How am I doing for time here? I've already talked for 10 minutes. It's pretty good, huh? Um, when I first built these raised beds, I just kind of dropped them in here. And I didn't really think about the light too much in my yard. Uh oh, the camera operator is right where I want to show. I'll go above, the, she's moving out of the way. She has, no, she has no desire to be on the internet. Can't really blame her. But these maples, these are my sugar maples along the road, they actually shade the yard. So. I'm gonna say the year before, pay attention is, but you wanna get your hands in the ground right now, right? So think about the sun as it travels over your yard. Actually, there are some calculators online that are mainly used for solar panels, but you could also figure out your optimum angle and sighting for your garden. And think about that, because it actually ends up that my beds over there get more sun than my main garden here. So like, do you see these? This garlic here, I'm gonna try and point the laptop at the garlic. Do you see that? I mean, they're a good size, but over there where the sun hits more, boom. Because what happens is, is in the winter, you get this solar thermal rise. That's a raised bed over there too, by the way. I'll just walk over and show you. And you, because it's a raised bed, it's above the frost line, it warms up. Again, I sound like a raised bed zealot, which maybe that is a good, it's good to be zealots about good things, isn't it? I think that word, let's make that word a better word, okay? But this is a super duper thrown together raised bed. I mean, this is just held together with some drywall screws. I just made a video about repairing your raised beds. But look how much more robust these are. And that's all about the location and the sun, because the arc of the sun we're gonna get blasted by the sunlight here, but those trees again, you get more here. By the way, this is my rhubarb, and I'm gonna put that in a new raised bed that I'm gonna build because 
it'll just grow better and it's, it gets engulfed with weeds here. So, all right, so moving on. Another thing about garden prep is actually starting seeds indoors, which I think is really therapeutic. Um, it's May now, so you could still try and do that, but you could build your own grow lights, go to like the Costco and the, the, the blue and orange stores all have these cheap LED shop lights that you could build a pretty simple rig out of and start some seeds, buy some of those transplant trays. The key there is to not overwater and you need 16 hours a day of sunlight. Aaron, uh, my good friend from the Impatient Gardener has a couple of videos about this cool setup where she uses that restaurant wire metro shelving in her basement and it's wrapped in mylar and it looks like something that Elon Musk is gonna put in a rocket ship, you know? But anyway, it works really well. At this point, you can put seeds in the ground. You can put, well, I just did put in sugar snap peas right here along the edges of my raised beds. And I really like that because they come up early, they grow in fruit, and then in the middle of summer, they die out. And that allows room for other things like this parsley that I put out. If you don't have room or the time or uh, you don't want to build this spaceship in your basement, you can just buy transplants, which is more and more what I'm doing. Um, just modern life sometimes gets in the way of the transplant. The transplanting is great. I mean, the seed starting is great when there's snow on the ground, but then you're like, oh, I want to go outside. So that's what I'm doing. The other thing to do is to calculate when is the best time to start those seeds indoors. I have planted tomato seeds way too early before, and all of a sudden you've got a giant tomato plant and it's still 30 degrees outside. Oh, who is that? Spiker, come. They're, they're well trained as you can. Spiker, come on. Come on. We're just training them on the uh, containment fence as well. So they have the big um, things on there. Come here, little girl. Andy. Andy, come. Andy, uh, come on. Come here. Can you, they want to see you, okay? Anyway, here is Andy. She is incredibly smart and very sweet. Can I have a kiss? No. Anyway, you don't need dogs for gardening, um, but man, they make life a lot more fun. So where were we? Transplanting. Seed starting. So the other thing to do is like, I have a friend who's like, oh, I planted my sunflowers. And I'm like, well, it's still cold. You should actually take your kitchen cooking thermometer, like your thermopen, and stick it in the ground and see what the temperature of your soil is. It makes a really big difference. Like we grow dahlias and the ground has to be, Aaron's gonna yell at me right now, I think 55 before you put those in the ground. If you put them in beforehand, they're either gonna not grow or grow really slowly and you're gonna be like, well, what happened there? So think about cool weather crops right now, at least in New England, if you're in Texas, some of the people on the Garden Fork group on Facebook in Texas already have you know, fruit. So this is kale because you know, we're near New York City. And um, these I bought at my local farm market. It's a uh, Freund farm, if you know, in Northwest Connecticut, is um, just really cool people. Oh, there they are again. So I think someone's throwing props into the background of the shot. So um, they show up. Thank you, love. But anyway, kale is an early crop. These are lettuces here. It's an early crop. If you go to some of the big box stores and they have the nursery on the side of the store, they may have stuff there that it's too cold to plant outdoors. So think about that. Again, temperature of the soil is key and, and what kind of plant you're putting in there. You can plant onions. You could put garlic in still now. You won't get as large of a garlic plant. I love garlic because it's wicked simple and it just grows. And then it comes out and you're like, it's so much better than the stuff you buy in the store. So. If you're looking for garlic in the fall or late summer, buy some from your farmer's market or check out Fillory Farm online. All right, so if you decide to go to your raised beds, you've decided I wanna plant a garden, you're first gonna to have to prepare the soil. You wanna think about, first you should just dig it and see what it is. Is it sandy? Is it clay? Is it middle of the road? We're lucky here to have kind of middle of the road soil. And then you want to do a soil test and then amend that soil. I think you really can't, my neighbor's running a power washer. Can you hear the power washer? 
Um, oh, there's a question. How big should veggie seedlings be before they go outside? Every time I try bring the seedlings outdoor, chipmunks tear them apart or eat them, or they wither in a day. Um, the thing about when it's okay to bring a seedling, you should actually start to harden them off by bringing out the seed tray into a sunny spot for a few hours a day and then longer and longer. And the other thing is to take a oscillating fan and point it on a gentle speed at your trays under the grow lights and that'll stiffen the stems because like the garlic is really stiff here because it's grown from the get-go outdoors and the wind is really whipping here. So you're hardening off, you wanna look up hardening off your transplants. But like I put these lettuce out and um, they got a little beat down. Uh, lettuce bounces back pretty fast. I'll just talk while they're in the background there. So again, I'm the big raised bed fan. So I think you should build raised beds. I think you should go on Craigslist or your Facebook marketplace or just ask a neighbor who might have what's called garden mix, a garden soil. And then, of course, there's gardens about how to build your raised beds. Really simple to do. I'm going to make another one just using rebar and wood later today. And then drop that soil into the raised bed. Oh, but before you do that, lay down cardboard. And then if you want additionally more cardboard between the raised beds and then between the raised beds, put wood chips. We're going to tamp down the grass and weeds here to keep it from popping up in there. But the raised bed already has grass in it, right? Because you're just throwing it on your lawn or whatever. The cardboard snuffs out all that growth so it doesn't try and grow through your brand new super duper soil. So put in your soil. It's going to settle and you're going to probably have to add to it there. If you already have an established garden bed and you want to start get get it ready for spring, we're going to do a couple of things. I think the imp most important thing is so it even though it doesn't get super compact because it's a raised bed, you should use, wait for it, a garden fork. This is where Garden Fork got its name as a show because it was, it still is, it's cooking and eating. And it's also DIY-ish stuff. Um, but I try to incorporate all that. But this opens up your soil. So let's see, I'm gonna put the laptop down. This would be like a super low shot. How's that? Does that work? So this, we're not going to raise the soil up. We're just going to go in and then move it back and forth and in and move it back and forth in, move it back and forth. I think if you flip the soil in a raised bed, you're kind of messing up the lasagna layering of the soil structure, the worms, bugs, stuff. I mean, if you go in like this and then turn it, I don't think that's, I don't do that. I just, I want to get some soil, air down into the mix. I want to get some water down in there. And when you poke holes in it, and if it rains, the water can run in. Boom, done. You're out. There's a question. Yes. Do you recommend diet for these slug mammals? Oh, slugs. This is, we're talking, well, talk, well, it's a garden thing. So if you have slugs, I think the best thing to do because I like beer. Andy doesn't drink beer, which is good. But um, the diatomaceous earth is essentially really old, prehistoric, maybe old crustaceans. And when a slug slides across this diet, it looks like kind of like talcum powder. It cuts up the bottom of the slug's body and they essentially dehydrate. And yes, that does work. If it rains, the diatomaceous earth loses its sharpness as it were so what i actually i don't really have a slug problem but you can pay your kids to pick slugs off or on a raised bed you can buy copper and line the edge of the beds with copper then put in beer traps take a yogurt container fill it with like this much beer and then bury it so it's flush with the top here be snails love beer and they just beeline for it. They go in and they drown. The idea with the copper is once you've eliminated the slugs in your raised beds, the copper, when slugs go across copper, it creates, I think, an electrolytic reaction. Um, 
I think it messes with their nervous system and they turn around and leave. You could also, if you have scrap copper pipe, maybe you're, you've renovated an old house and copper isn't really getting really high rates at um, recyclers right now as far as scrap. So you could run old copper pipe along the edges here. Just make sure it's flat and there isn't any room underneath it between it and the raised bed board that the slug could get underneath. Well, it would probably hit it either way. But anyway, yeah, you can use diatomaceous earth, but in, I think it's a short-term solution. You're gonna be constantly laying it down. The problem is if you're in a flower bed, it's a bigger issue like hostas, like slugs love hostas, but you're not gonna run copper all the way around each hosta you have. So yeah, di to, uh, the beauty of diatomaceous earth is you just you can scoop it out of a big bag around your plants. It does its thing, but you're fighting with nature. Nature is, well, nature loves a void and nature nature is always going to win. I'm gonna look at my notes because I made a whole list. And, um, do, 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 do. all right, so we aerated our soil. Then what I do, I don't have any here. Uh, I was going to go get some, is I put down an inch of compost. You can go buy compost or you could make your own compost. We have we have the pallet compost bin back there. It's not all chopped up yet, so I didn't want to bring it out. And then just lay that on. Oh, and before that, I will lay down a fertilizer. When you're using any kind of garden bed, you're putting in plants per square foot an awful lot of root to produce a lot of food for you and you're pulling a lot of nutrients out of the soil every season. So you can put in a time release fertilizer like this is Milorganite. Um, they're not a sponsor. Troy Built is our sponsor. Thank you, Troy Built. And um, this is a time release. It's like a little pellets. It it's, was originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin's um, uh, uh, wastewater system and now I'm not quite sure but it is a brand that I like and you can this bag has probably lasted me three or four years um, sometimes mice like to get in there so just be careful that you can also get something like this this is called echo scraps and what they do a lot of is um, it is natural and organic like the nitrogen content in here, a lot of it comes from uh, chicken feathers, believe it or not. Chicken feathers have a very high organic content. So layer of this, not a giant layer of either one. I don't think this one is time release, but um, this, you know, again, either company, these people, they've actually, this was sent to me as a sample, full disclosure. So, oh, and I just, you don't want to see what I just did with that back fertilizer because it just went on the ground. All right. Here's a neighbor. Wave to the neighbors. Which neighbor is that? So anyway, um, we've got our fertilizer. We've got our compost. Then you could put in your transplants or you can put in your seeds. Again, think about temperature. String beans right now is too early in New England, but if you are farther south, you're probably in string bean weather already. I think string beans and sugar snap peas, any kind of peas, are a big bang for the buck. It's, it's kind of like an aha moment for your kids when they realize that food doesn't come out of a box, it actually comes out of the ground. I mean, around here, the sugar snap peas don't make it into the kitchen, that we just eat them. And the Labradors, well, they love, someone teaches them to eat the sugar snap peas. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let me consult my list again here. Let's see, I've been using concrete reinforcement panels in my garden from your tip a while ago. Works great as a trellis vertically and a dome for cloth over. Oh yeah, oh, so that's another thing to think about. If you wanna start your seeds, by the way, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, if you wanna start plants early, you could also build, wait for it, the mini greenhouse, which I have built several iterations of here that has a, um, this is a thermal controlled vent here. I talk about that in the videos. But you could, instead of doing transplants in your basement, you could first warm up the soil here. And then I'm going to try and balance the laptop. I hope it doesn't fall over like this. 
always have a stick nearby to hold your bed up. And then you have an area, like I've got my head in here right now. Hope it doesn't fall. Um, and I can just feel that it's warmer in here than it is out here. Like you just, this is kind of like, well, you could make a little sauna out of it if you want. And then I have this uh, super, this is a Bluetooth enabled, uh, super duper, Troy Belt sells these on their website, by the way. Um, no, they don't, that was just a joke. But right now, it's 50 degrees inside the bed. The air temperature is. The ground temperature is warmer than that. So you could put in your string beans. You could put in your sunflowers. And you can move this hoop house. You can. I have it connected with some scrap hinges. You could just unbolt the hinges and move it to another area. The hardest part of a mini greenhouse is storing it. Like in the middle of summer, you don't want it on your beds. And... Um, where do you put the thing? So I hide mine behind the woodshed, but thumbs thing got, oh, we're running, it's 26 minutes. Stick around anyway. Um, oh, I forgot to do about, what about the chipmunks, but it looks like Mr. Kennerly is here. And um, chipmunks happen. If you wanna harden off your plants, you might wanna put some wire mesh around them outside while you're doing that. It's just, again, you're fighting nature and nature always wins. But if you build a hoop house like this, you can get a head start. There's a fantastic gardener in Canada. Her name is Nikki Jabour, J-A-B-B-O-U-R. She has two or three books out about gardening year round. And she lives up in this snowy Canadian province. And she does a lot of things with this and with cold frames. If you want to learn more about that, you can almost... You can garden year round. I mean, the, in, the, in the middle of winter, they're not quite growing there, but you can get kale and stuff and carrots, stuff like that. Okay, I think I'm just gonna leave that up because I have to put the laptop down again. So again, this is sponsored by Troy Belt. I'm Eric from the YouTube channel, Garden Fork. I wanna just check my list here. I've got a few minutes. And then stick around because after me comes several experts from the Troy Belt headquarters in Ohio. Um, super nice people. They really know what they're talking about. And then who the most expert gardener, well, next to Aaron, is um, Matt Madison. He will be on at the end. There's a series of live streams here today, and you can check that those links below here. So stick around for that. All right. Any more questions? Oh, so, um, so Troy Belt just laid in a couple of information things. And... Um, Base beds, seedling, sugar stamp piece, fertilize lightly, prepare beds. I didn't mention this before, but if you're still in winter mode right now or thinking about for next year, you can actually get a lot done in the garden. Where are they? <laughs> the, uh, the dog wrangler keeps throwing the dogs in the background. Oh, I just kicked the stick. <laughs> Never a dull moment here. Oh, who is this? All right, I'll play with my dog and talk about early garden prep. So think about like right behind me, this is an apple tree. Oh, you wanna, I know you wanna see Andy. Um, but when you're siding your garden, think about that apple tree when I put it in was four feet tall and now it's 15. It's gonna start shading the garden, believe it or not. So in late winter is the best time to prune that puppy back. You might have to get the pole pruner out um, or just climb up there with your super duper Troy built Big product placement there for Barb and Megan. Um, and whack that puppy back. So the best time to prune, I think, is when you have the pruners in your hand, but ideally when the plant is dormant. But you can also repair your raised beds. Oh, I'm running, I got 45 seconds here. Anyway, stick around. There's more experts here. When you build your raised beds, sometimes they blow out. I just repaired this one with some banding. There's a lot you can do beforehand, but right now, go get your hands dirty. So I'm gonna sign off, but right after me is a bunch more experts, and you can actually rewatch this if you wanna share it with your friends. So this has been a blast. I love this live stream thing. It's kind of the only thing I'm actually good at, is talking. So, um, oh, there's Dennis. What's fun. All right, I'm gonna hit the end button. I wanna thank uh, Charlie and the camera operator who are in the back here. I'm going to hit the end stream button. And thank you, Troy Belt.
who is our sponsor? And there we go.